feeling Hello, my Lemon Drop crew, and welcome back to the Lemonade Stand, or welcome, if you are new. I'm a pumpkin today, because it's October now, so I gotta break out my, my annual pumpkin shirt that I only wear on Halloween, so pretty much once a year, but it's not Halloween yet. But it is October, so because of that, I decided to bust it out a little bit early. So here we are. Okay, let's finish the intro. My name is Brianna. I am a certified personal trainer, a big, huge biology nerd, and a registered dietitian to be... We are gathered here today for another episode of me reacting to what TikTok influencers call facts, but what I call verbal regurgitation of nonsense in regards to nutrition and health sciences. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lols and some dry sarcasm along the way, why not hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand? We've also got uh, pumpkin stuff here too, once a year. I would really appreciate it. Without anything further, let's make lemonade. So this first one highlights a really big issue with how I feel that social media has influenced an individual's weight loss journey. What I eat in a day videos. People have been asking me to do these forever and I just will not. <laughs> I personally don't care for what I eat in a day videos because one, who gives a shit? And two, what I eat in a day for my body and my goals doesn't necessarily, that doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Just because that person did keto and intermittent fasting and paleo and backflips doesn't mean you should too. Unfortunately though, a lot of people are desperate to lose weight, but they're also an uninformed consumer. So they may go to Google or YouTube and type in what I eat in a day to lose weight, and come across some influencers what I eat in a day video, and then copy them and assume that the results that that person got will be exactly what will happen to them. Sometimes what I eat in the day videos are relatively harmless as far as what the person is eating sometimes but many times you get people doing fad diets and crash diets and when that happens you get crap like this So this person has showed us a full day of eating for her weight loss uh, military diet edition. And it looks like she eats about 1,100 calories a day, 1,108 to be exact. In a clinical setting, a patient eating this few calories would be referred to as a low calorie diet or LCD. LCDs are sometimes given to patients who are morbidly obese or extremely morbidly obese. There's also what's called a very low calorie diet or a VLCD, which is generally around 800 calories a day. And those are typically for like really extreme cases. Both types of these diets should be medically supervised. The thing about this being a military, the military diet is interesting. Um, maybe this has changed, but the last time that I heard of the military diet, it involved a lot of hot dogs. I didn't see any hot dogs in hers. Um, she ate sausages, but not hot dogs. Um, for those of you who don't know, the military diet is kind of, it's just another like fad crash diet. It's a three day diet and it only um, offers you about a thousand calories a day. And it is purported that one can lose up to 10 pounds in a week, which, you know, no sh you're barely eating. An LCD or a VLCD is not something that someone who just wants to lose a few pounds should do on their own. It's not for fun. It's not for at-home weight loss. Being on a diet this low in calories, if not supervised, can result in vitamin and mineral deficiencies or malnutrition. We don't know this girl's situation. We don't know if the diet's being medically supervised. My guess, however, is that it's probably not. I know this is a loaded topic, but just looking at her, she does not look like she has morbid obesity. So if a medical professional put her on an LCD, I... I, I mean, I would just ask why. And my biggest problem here though is probably that she's putting it on TikTok, on social media, uh, saying, look at me eat this diet to lose weight. There is undoubtedly people imitating her and trying to do this diet to lose weight themselves. There's no doubt in my mind that she's probably losing weight on this or has lost a lot of weight uh, because it's only 1100 calories a day. Of course you're gonna lose weight. We don't know how long she's doing this, but this is just not sustainable whatsoever. The military diet is technically, like I said, a three day diet, but I mean, that doesn't stop some people from trying to maintain it longer than that. So that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> Let's move on. So this next one kind of piggybacks off the last one in that it's somebody putting their like extreme diet on social media for everyone to see. The person we're about to see is a guy. He eats one hour a day, or I've also seen him do 30 minutes too. In the other 23 to 23 and a half hours, he fasts, meaning he is voluntarily restricting all oral intake. I got like three or four screen recordings and they're, they're just, they're each just like 20 or 30 seconds, so I'm just gonna let them all play.
That one, um, that was a 26 hour fast apparently he was breaking. Here's the last one. How does this guy not puke? That's insane. This is, this is really, I'm like horrified, but I'm also low key fascinated. According to his Instagram profile, he has lost a hundred pounds in a year. That's an incredible amount of weight to lose. That's a whole person. Well, like a middle schooler. And according to his Instagram profile, he credits his weight loss to this specific eating pattern that he follows. This is crazy, man. That's insane. But first off, I don't know how I feel about him just like proudly sharing this on social media. He's inadvertently like kind of encouraging other people to eat this way, which probably won't work for every single person in the world. And for many of us is probably also not necessary if we want to pursue weight loss. This is another example of someone doing an extreme method to lose weight and because it worked for them, they now feel like they have to share it with everybody else to get other people on the bandwagon. That's how I perceive this. It really annoys me to no end whenever influencers do this. Lastly, and this is a little touchy, so a little bit of a trigger warning right here. This, this method of eating could be considered disordered. I want to reiterate here that I'm not a mental health professional, nor am I a nutrition professional yet. So this is just my own interpretation based on the facts and what we are being presented with here. To recap, here is the definition of disordered eating directly from eatright.org. Disordered eating is used to describe a range of irregular eating behaviors that may or may not warrant a diagnosis of a specific eating disorder. And then they go on to list some things that may be considered disordered eating. One of those things is rigid rituals and routines surrounding food and exercise. It's my opinion that restricting your food intake for 23 or 24 hours a day and only allowing yourself to eat for one hour or 30 minutes that fits into the category of a rigid ritual or routine. This is just not my opinion as well. I showed this to a couple of friends of mine who are dietitians and um, they agreed with me. Um, one of them even said that I would definitely call that disordered. There's no reason that somebody needs to eat like that, uh, especially medically unsupervised. As far as weight loss goes, and this is more of my own hypothesis and interpretation, um, I wonder if his weight loss is directly the result of him only eating one hour a day, or is it the result of him restricting his overall calorie intake? Because one of those days, which was it? Yeah, it was like Burger King edition. He ate three Whoppers. He ate three f***ing Whoppers. How many calories is in a Whopper? I think it's at least a thousand. Let's look it up. 660 calories. So he ate three Whoppers. So three Whoppers is... 1,980 calories, roughly. So he ate almost 2,000 calories and that was just the Whoppers because remember he had fries, he had desserts, he had other stuff too. So in one sitting, he probably ate at least like 5,000 calories. If he lost 100 pounds in a year, I just, I wonder what his diet was like before he started eating this way. And also I wonder like, this is really, this is just me speculating and like hypothesizing. I wonder if his like stomach is insanely stretched out because if I eat three Whoppers in an hour, I would throw up. Not only did he eat three Whoppers, he ate, let me look at it again. He ate, he ate four mozzarella sticks, two tacos, three Whoppers and two small fries, 10 chicken nuggets, three cheeseburgers and one small fry, 11 fun sized chocolates, one jello cup and two rice cakes. That's an insane amount of food to eat in such a short amount of time. I feel like somebody's stomach has to be really stretched out for them to be able to, to eat that much in one sitting. I don't know. Anybody who works in bariatric care or weight loss surgery experience, what do you think? I do find this one disturbing, but it's also like weirdly fascinating to me. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, once again, I do take issue with him putting this on social media and being like, look at me, I lost 100 pounds eating this way. Because what's probably happening? Somebody who's desperate to lose weight is likely following his lead and expecting the same results that he got. Who knows, they might be hurting themselves and they don't even know it. Because 
fasting, you know, fasting is fasting. <laughs> fasting is fasting. I don't want to get into it. There is a practical application to fasting, but in general, um, I also believe that if someone is going on a fast for a medical purpose, then it should be medically supervised. Um, but in general, if you're just like a normal, regular, overall healthy person who needs to lose weight, like I, I vote and a lot of dietitians also agree, there's no reason that you need to starve yourself for two days. Somebody might want to try this and then they're like, well, he did it and he lost hundred pounds. Okay, well, that's him. You know, maybe that's the thing that he does. I don't really agree with it, and I personally think it's kind of disordered, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Doesn't mean you should hop on the bandwagon. I think I've summed up my feelings here. <laughs> Let's move on. So this next one has made its rounds, not just on TikTok, which I think is actually the original source of it, but I've seen it on Instagram too. I'm in a couple like RD and RD to B Facebook groups. I shared it to one of my groups, and then in another group that I'm in, I saw it shared to that group too. This clip that you're about to see is being shared not for its infinite wisdom, uh, but because it's absolutely ridiculous and most people, I'd say like 95% of people are just like not having it. <laughs> and in both the dietitian groups that I'm a part of, the RD and RD to B groups that I'm in, they were up in arms about this. And I mean, they were losing it. <laughs> and you will see why right now. One of the quickest ways to shorten your lifespan is to have elevated blood sugars. Meaning if you want to age faster than anybody you know, eat every two to three hours because every time you do that you raise glucose and that is poison it is um, a toxin to the body it creates inflammation so what we want to do is we want to eat foods that don't really raise glucose and then also have meal timing which is where intermittent fasting comes into play i feel like i frequently exhaust the phrase this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay. But you guys, you guys, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, from the depths of my soul, I mean it this time, this is truly the dumbest thing I have ever heard spoken about human biology and nutrition. I am dumbfounded. I will say the fact that so many people are condemning what he said in this clip is restoring my faith in humanity slightly. I'm glad that a lot of people just are like, wow, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about this. Let's start here with our first lesson in biology. Oh, by the way, if you're new, um, I, I God, I never ever say this. I guess I just assume it, but I, I guess I should say it more. One of the things in my intro that I say is I'm a biology nerd. And by that, I mean, I love biology, but I don't just love biology. I went to school for biology. I went to East Carolina University. I have a bachelor's of science in biological sciences. I love science. So, you know, that's what I mean when I say I'm a biology nerd. So let's start here with a lesson in basic biology. If you are a carbon-based life form, like a human, for example, your body's favorite source of fuel comes from glucose, which comes from the consumption of carbohydrates. Blood glucose is a measure of how much glucose is in your blood at any given time. For most healthy non-diabetic humans, a blood glucose range is like 70 to 99. I've also heard some people say 70 to 100. That range is considered normal. Whenever I talk about diabetes, I wanna add, I do have a healthcare background, I'm not a healthcare professional, I'm not a nurse, not a doctor. I do have a healthcare background though. I was a school health technician for almost three years and the biggest part of my job was medication administration and diabetes care. I had type one diabetic kids and uh, I took care of them. I've injected children with insulin before. So I do have pretty extensive training in diabetes care. That being said, I'm still not a healthcare professional. If you ask me about your diabetes care in the the comment section. I'm going to respond to you, but I'm going to tell you, you go talk to your doctor. I ain't your doctor. So there's this trend on social media where people who promote fasting, they assert that you need to keep your blood sugar as low as possible. Manipulating your diet with a sole purpose of keeping your blood sugar as low as possible can get seriously dangerous because a lot of your body's metabolic functions need glucose. ATP synthesis. Glucose is the primary fuel source for the brain. It's the primary fuel source for all the body's cells. Even in plants, obviously we're not plants, but just an example of demonstrating how important glucose is to so many organisms. In photosynthesis, plants are using light energy to convert it to glucose for energy. He is purporting that one should minimize how often they eat so as to not raise their blood glucose levels because glucose is, and I quote, poison. It is a toxin to the body. Because every time you do that, you raise glucose and that is poison. It is um, a toxin to the body. 
obviously. Obviously, if our blood glucose gets too high, then that's a serious problem. Obviously. That's why type one diabetics have to self-administer insulin after a carb heavy meal to keep their blood glucose within normal levels. That's why if someone's blood sugar is dangerously high for too long, it can lead to a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. So if your blood sugar levels get too out of control, yes, that can cause serious injury. But to call glucose, the gasoline, the fuel for just about every carbon-based life form on earth, to call it poison, is asinine. That has to be the most asinine thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But I'm only 29, so there's still plenty of time to hear more dumb stuff. If glucose is poison, then why is it your body's favorite fuel source to function? If it's poison, why do plants need it for food? If it's poison, then why do our bodies store glycogen, which is the storage form of glucose, in our liver and skeletal muscles? If it's poison, then why somebody with a blood glucose level of zero, why are they either in a coma or dead? If it's poison, why does my pancreas secrete glucagon if my blood glucose levels get too low? Answer me those questions. Hey guys, it's editing Brianna here. I wanna take this opportunity to just insert something in the video that I for some reason didn't say um, or address while I was actually filming the video. So here we are doing it while we're editing. But there might be some people who interpret his language to mean, well, he's not saying that glucose is bad overall. He's just saying that if your glucose gets too high, then that's what's bad, blah, blah, blah. And to that, I kind of say, well, duh, obviously. But that's not what I gather from the context of that uh, that small clip that I saw. Um, he's somebody who's very pro intermittent fasting and keto. So, you know, we can also imagine that he's anti, <laughs> I don't want to say anti-carbs, but like very against the consumption of carbohydrates or at the very least excess carbohydrates. So my interpretation of what he's saying is that he's implying that like just letting your body have blood glucose is bad. So in the video right now, I am really just talking to you guys about my interpretation of what I'm hearing him say. And really I've, I've looked on this, this is like I said, this has been cross posted in a lot of places and a lot of people hold the same opinion that I have. Most of the uh, comments I've seen uh, talking about this person, the, not the person, but what he's saying, are not positive because it sounds insane. So I do just wanna clarify that, but beyond that, my issue with him actually goes pretty far beyond the context of that short clip that we saw. Uh, my issue with him is for one thing, he's, uh, I'm about to talk about this in a minute, he's completely unqualified based on the information that I was able to find on him. He just has this uh, FDP, FDN-P certification, which means Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Professional. I've also seen it written practitioner before too. I really don't know which one's which. Um, I'm going to talk more about that in a minute and why I believe that that certification is BS and like not legitimate in any way. Um, but the other thing that really highly disturbs me and upsets me about this person is he's a best-selling author. He has huge following on social media. A lot of people listen to him. Uh, and he also calls himself, a, he calls himself, I think on his website, he writes, the world leading expert, expert on fasting in the ketogenic diet. And all he has in his education background, based on his LinkedIn profile, based on the information on his website, is just this chintzy little certification, which I'm going to tell you, I'll explain to you why I think is BS. So my problems with this person go far beyond that clip that we're seeing right now. This is another really good example of something that we just saw in the last thing that we looked at. Somebody doing something that works for them and then because it worked for them, they feel that they now need to spread it to the world and get everybody else in the bandwagon. On his website, all it says under like his about me section, it just is that he's lost 80 pounds and ever since then, he has been on a mission to like teach the world or whatever. And this is where I take the issue with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing your story as sharing your weight loss journey. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think the issue comes with his only qualification and his only source of his only background knowledge and his only education is the fact that he lost 80 pounds. And that's it. Experience should never be a substitute for education, especially when you're talking about things that could heavily impact people's health and well-being. And I also want to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing facts, with sharing 
evidence-based information. Yes, there is some science to support fasting. Yes, there is some science to support to support uh, the ketogenic diet. There, I say all the time, ketogenic diet has been uh, found to be an effective treatment for epilepsy, but that is under medical supervision. Both of those things should be under medical supervision. So yes, he's talking about fasting and the ketogenic diet, which have been studied on the clinical level, but they've been studied under really specific circumstances. And he's just really talking about it for for health and for for weight loss at home weight loss i should say so that's the point i'm trying to make experience does not equal education our bodies have mechanisms to help us maintain blood sugar levels which i said for most healthy non-diabetic people is like 70 to about 100. in a healthy non-diabetic person when your blood sugar gets too high beta cells of the pancreas secrete insulin to help get your blood sugar lowered back down to normal levels if your blood sugar gets too low alpha cells also in your pancreas secrete a hormone called glucagon glucagon helps raise your blood sugar sir your logic denies science what about this guy who is he he's apparently Currently a best-selling author. His books are titled The Perfect Health Booklet, The Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet, and The Power of Sleep. That last one actually sounds interesting. Sleep is very powerful. He's also the founder of something called Keto Camp and camp is cutely spelled with a K. Across his social media accounts, he writes the following letters behind his name, FDN dash P, which means functional diagnosis, nutrition practitioner. On his LinkedIn profile under education, all it says is that he has this certification. Oh, by the way, this guy's name is Ben Azadi. There's no mention of a higher degree in physiology, biology, nutrition, biomedical science, nothing like that. Now, you don't need a college education to be a success, okay? You don't need to go to college to be somebody. Plenty of highly successful people in the world are college dropouts or never even set foot in college. So if you're about to put in my comments section, that I'm being elitist because I'm saying that he's a nobody unless he went to college, save it, because that's not what I'm saying. I am, however, saying that, and this is strictly my opinion, if you wanna work in the healthcare field and work directly with other human beings, nurse, doctor, dietitian, physical therapist, if you wanna be a surgeon, if you wanna be a microbiologist, if you wanna be administering medical health or nutrition advice that will affect somebody's well-being should they take your advice, then you damn well better have yourself an accredited degree in higher education. And based on his LinkedIn profile, he does not hold a degree in higher education, just this certification. Oh, by the way, a uh, quick little tidbit about that cert. I went to their website, which is functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com, and I just searched for like accreditation. Is it even an accredited uh, program? One of the organizations that they claim to be accredited by is the AADP, which is the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. Yes, drugless. You may or may not know this, but the AADP has kind of been in the news before, sort of. In 2016, an 18-year-old named Malachi Love Robinson was arrested in Florida for impersonating a doctor. One of the fancy degrees that he had hanging on his wall was a certificate from the American Association of Drugless Practitioners saying that he was a board-certified health practitioner. During the investigation, the president of the AADP was contacted and was asked to verify the educational documents that Love Robinson submitted as verification that he was even eligible to be board certified from the American Association of Drugless Practitioners, or AADP, as well as the American Alternative Medical Association. The investigator, whose name was Carla Sutherland, was sent and given confirmation by the AADP president that the documents that Love Robinson provided were school transcripts and certificates from Southwest College. College of Naturopathic Medicine and Arizona State University. Love Robinson had never attended either of these institutions. Yet he was still given a certificate by the AADP stating that he was board certified. All the research I've done on the AADP, it's widely determined by many publications to be a degree mill and an accreditation mill. As for the other organization that the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Certification course claims to be accredited by, that one is called the American Natural Wellness Coaches Board. I had a tough time finding more information on them that was not biased toward them, and by that I mean the information that I found was either directly on their own website or from people who claim to be board certified by them. With the AADP, all I did was type that into Google and plenty of stuff came up which called their legitimacy into question, but the American Natural Wellness Coaches Board had limited information 
information on it, at least what I could find. Like the AADP, though, I have a strong hunch that they are also an illegitimate accreditation mill. In the United States, an institution or educational program is considered legitimate if it's accredited by an agency that is recognized by either the Department of Education or the Council for Higher Education Accreditation, or the CHIA. I did a search through both databases and did not find the American Natural Wellness Board in either one. And let's say that I have concrete evidence that the American Natural Wellness Board is fully recognized by either the Department of Education or the CHIA. If that's true, then why does the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Program also need to say that they're accredited by the American Association of Drugless Practitioners? Now to some of my thoughts about the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition certification that Ben Azadi has, if an institution is accredited by an accreditation agency that is not recognized by the United States Department of Education or the CHIA as an authorized accreditation entity, then in my opinion, that institution's accreditation status is baloney and any certifications that they offer, quote unquote, should not be taken seriously. And for those of you who don't know what a degree mill is in the United States, a degree mill, they're also sometimes called diploma mills. Basically, all it means is all you have to do is send in a check and they'll send you what looks like a legitimate degree, college diploma, saying that you've graduated or saying that you're board certified or saying something official. It makes it look like you're official and it makes it look like you have higher education, but really all you did was send in a check. So you don't need to have any sort of background in that thing. Anybody can, anybody can pay for it. If you have the money, you can pay for it. I'm not going to say a ton about this here, but there is a top, top, uh, elite level beach body coach who claims board certification from the AADP. And that beach body coach has threatened legal action against me because of some past videos that I've made featuring her. I cannot begin to tell you guys the rabbit hole I fell into about this freaking organization and like accreditation mills and diploma mills and all that kind of stuff. It's crazy. A video on that situation is coming, okay? I'm gonna do it, but production is taking a long time because it's going to be very like investigative journalism an expose <laughs> type type vibe so i'm doing like a ton of research on the video so that video is coming but be patient okay uh i talked about this guy longer than i expected so i think we're gonna cut this video here in conclusion yikes yikes Yikes. I hope the things that I've highlighted here have helped you understand why you shouldn't just trust anybody on social media with a big following or has a fancy sounding credential or certificate. It's so unfortunate that it's more often than not, the people in the video that we saw today, these people are like thrust to the front of the line and thrust into the spotlight and get all the attention. Whereas actual professionals get completely disregarded or even attacked for criticizing these people. They all have a big following, so they must be right. This guy wrote a book, so he must be right. He lost 100 pounds, so he must be right. When it comes to your health and your well-being, facts matter, credentials matter, and education matters. If you made it this far, comment pumpkin and confuse everybody who peaced out early. Uh, I don't have a lot of time for a long-winded intro because I took longer than I expected filming this video and I'm about to be late for spin class, so I got to go. No time for the dogs, don't subscribe. I'll show you guys, I'll give you guys like a montage of videos or something like that at the end of this. I gotta go, I gotta go to spin class. Thank you so very much for watching. Like, subscribe, or dislike if you didn't like me, but haha, -ha, you still watch to the end and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Oh my god, you're so cute.